what you see in the way of smoke is mainly steam. Yeah? And you see the big clouds of white smoke, that's almost entirely steam. So for the first part, you're driving water off the wood. Um, and you heat it up until uh, you've driven all the water out. And then when the smoke goes clear, that means that you've driven off all the steam. And at that point, you're starting to burn charcoal. And you need to stop just before that point. never going to get a 100% even burn, but to try and get an even burn, what we do is we put the biggest bit of bits of wood into the hottest bits of the kiln and the smallest bits of wood into the coldest bits of the kiln. Because like burning cakes in an oven, you need a really hot oven to burn a big cake, whereas you can burn a little tiny cake in a relatively cool oven. So that central hot column is really hot and anything you put in that is going to carbonise, and not stone. Really. But putting wood in that is going to carbonise in that central column. Then the heat from there goes out like that and kind of misses that section at the top on the outside and it misses the bottom here. So the, the coolest parts of the kiln are that part there and that part there. And they're going to be as cool as maybe 500 degrees centigrade. Um, whereas the centre of the kiln is going to be temperatures probably exceeding a thousand degrees centigrade. So these are called feats. The first laying out of the base. Obviously, charcoal making being the sort of thing it is, there's different words for these around the country. In Wales, these are called stringers. So when I meet, meet a Welsh charcoal maker, then you'll know that I've been trained yeah. in Devon. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, no, no. Say stringers if you're in Wales, and Wales, and you'll think you've been trained in Wales. Well, on each, each side. Yeah, yeah, each side. And then, um, that's it. If you want to, if they're not good enough, um, yeah, let's take that one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See these up. Is this a mix we're going to be putting in? So, a mix of wood. Yeah. Yes. We will be putting a mix of wood in. The, the, we use for oh, the sorry. feet and the bridges that come next, we predominantly use willow. So we have quite a lot of willow, and it's not the best for making barbecue charcoal. Right. And so, this wood, this is kind of sacrificial. So, now we're loading the kiln. And the paper's there to start it. We put a little bit of oil on the paper just to, to make sure that we, it'll light okay. And we're making effectively vents that go to the middle to let the air in and the smoke out. And uh, so we've got two bits of wood and then here we've got a bit of paper because this one's where we're gonna light it. So it's especially important that that one stays open and it just helps it to stay open. Now, so th this part here is called the hobble and it's basically the tinder locks of the charcoal kiln. Um, and the idea is that this lights really quickly. So we start like that, with making a vent to get the air towards the middle. And then if you get some small brown ends that will go across that, then we'll just cover the top in them and then they should light them quickly. So, they go. Any more? Any more? Uh, yeah, another couple of handfuls like that. <laughs> so now you can stand on. Yeah, that one's good. And um, yeah, try that one. Cool. That's pretty good. Right, I'll put that back up there. And then, if we have some of them long brown ends, we want to make a big area of, um, of air underneath um, to get that fire going as quickly as possible. And so what we do is we place these, like that, across that gap. If you didn't have brown ends, then obviously you can use for example. Kindling. Just use kindling. Just use tin, yeah, just use really well dry kindling, something that's going to burn quick. And for these, you could just yeah, just cut some thin sticks that were long enough to, to do this. Put 
when we light it, we got the vents all open. Yeah. We've got the sand clear back from the edge of the kiln, so there's, so there's air coming in from all directions. Mm. You've got the bottom made up, so there's as much airflow through the bottom as possible. And you've got brown ends which burn really quickly and paper which burns really quickly. So you can get that going just as quickly as possible. Yeah, well, Okay, so what we're doing, and you'll see is we've got the smallest stuff is right on the edge where the coolest part of the kiln is because the surface area of the kiln cools it down. And then coming in from that, you go from the small stuff to this, which we call medium, to next size up, to the largest stuff, which is stuff for the middle, um, so that it all cooks at the same time, even though the middle of the kiln is hotter than the outside. So medium is all this size. So generally speaking, we're kind of going to be going small, medium, next size up, and then we've got stuff for the middle. Right. So there's kind of four different sizes. And if everything goes to plan and it's all going smoothly in, that's what we'll sort of we'll just go through those four different sizes over and over and over again. <laughs> until it's full. Next size up is that sort of size. Don't worry if there's a bit of mishmash. It's not precise. That one's gonna say yes. So we have a wheelbarrow of that and a wheelbarrow of the smear. And the stuff that we put in the middle is it not anything that's chunky okay. like this. So we're we'll about to move you in the wheel bag next size up. Just open this side up to allow the air out so that when we first light it we've got maximum airflow underneath and we've got maximum airflow coming out just to get it going. So on the chimneys, we want the chimney to draw, so we have to block the end. So we just cut that so that it's neatly like that, and then we're going to put a brick over the end of the chimney, and then and we're going to seal that like that, so the chimney draws, and then. On the, on the on each gap in between chimneys and vents, we want to, we want to block this up, but we don't want to do what I just did then of throwing sand underneath the kiln. We want to throw it to the side of the kiln so it drops down, because then we won't fill the kiln, and it will block that gap. So. Who wants a shovel? Who wants a spade? So what we've got, all four chimneys are smoking well. Sometimes at this stage, especially if you've got cold chimneys, they won't all smoke because they're not drawing properly. So if, say, this chimney is drawing really well, um, but this chimney is not drawing, 
what we do is to swap those two over. And you take the cold chimney off that and the hot chimney off that, swap them over. That will start smoking because it's coming out with hot smoke and that one will draw. And normally that does it. If that doesn't do it, in an extreme situation, pull the sound back from one edge if it's not going properly. Uh, near the chimney to get, uh, get the air in to get it going. But that means you have shut it down a bit too quick. This top section here of the chimney, before the steam hits the atmosphere, and we want to be able to see through that steam. So we're going to put a cap on there to stop the air in there. We put the brick over the vents to stop us ending up just chucking sand right into that vent. Welding gloves are important as well because it's quite hot. <laughs> and the fact that the other two chimneys aren't ready is fine. It often happens you can wait even sometimes two hours between chimneys. If very occasionally we have our kiln, all the chimneys go at the same time, but that's really rare. So the kiln's now closed down, all chimneys have been shut and all the vents are shut. It's all sealed up, we'll leave it for 24 hours and uh, then we'll be able to open it and get the charcoal out. So, probably time for breakfast. This is the grading part. I, I shovel the charcoal up on here and then it's and it's department grading. We grade over a 25 mil mesh and that allows us to call our charcoal restaurant quality charcoal. Um, so obviously anything smaller than 25 drops down, but it means that the charcoal overall is in much better quality because it's larger pieces. This here is what I've graded this morning. That's all ready to go in a bag. So that's what the final product actually is going to look like. So, bigger pieces like this will break in half um, and what we're looking for to make sure it's actually charcoal rather than brown ends is that it's black all the way through the middle and what's known as brown ends well, that's them, is that's them. so that's basically wood that hasn't quite made itself into charcoal you can see it's actually just what will you do with that hmm? what, will you, what will you do with that we will say that we'll put that this just in sacks here um, we saved some of them to relight the kiln when we light loads this afternoon and any excess we use as um, kindling yeah. and, and in our wood burners because it's kind of it lights really quickly, it's really dry and it's really hot. So it's not a, it's a waste product but it has its uses. Because you'll never be able to convert all of the wood to charcoal because some's going to be because there's different varieties of wood, some convert quicker than others. We err when we shut our kiln down on a more 
slightly brown endy burn because it means that the overall charcoal is better because the charcoal that's actually charcoal has only just turned itself into charcoal. If you let the kiln go over a bit and you start burning away some of the charcoal, the end result of the charcoal is just a lighter, sort of lighter, yeah, charcoal. Not much left to burn, is it? Not less charcoal. Yes, because yeah. it's already started to burn itself. Yeah.